Good evening from Xfinity Center, Maryland over Penn State, 66-59. Dustin Clark stepping in tonight. Got Bruce, spaces behind the camera. I'm Wayne Viner. Bruce, take it this away. This man to my right delivered the most blistering attack on referees that I've ever seen. All right, the most blistering attack. And Rick Jacklitz jumps in here. He gets a little piece of the action. Bruce, today. that was Bruce. That was 11 years of pinup frustration. I'm not being able to say what I really wanted to hey, say. When you're I, kept it, I kept it clean, though. I just, I just let them know they missed four calls. <laughs> They tried to throw you out. It looked like they <laughs> no, did. No, 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 no. I, I like those guys. They like me. You know, you can't get per let personal feelings get in the way of business. Talk about what a great win it was tonight. How tough yeah, of a yeah, win. Yeah, it was a great win. Tough win, you know, with these guys to win. You know, you got to learn how to win close games. And this was certainly, you know, a close game. And at home, you know, it's it's good to figure out a way. And, um, you know, I thought we really defended. Or they, is it we or is it they, Bruce? Uh, but, you know, I thought they defended and it was good. Talk about the difference in the, from the first to second half. Maryland, they were getting pushed around a bit in the first half. In the second half, yeah. Maryland just comes out of the shoot. I thought I, I thought the, the start to the second half was key. Good teams start halves and end halves well, and that's exactly what we did. We started the game well, we ended the first half well, we started the second half well, we ended the game well, and that was a big deal. When you watch games at home and you recruited half, half or more than half of these kids, how emotional are you? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I thought it'd be more relaxing sitting over here not having a suit on. <laughs> Heck, I got sweated more tonight than I did over there coaching. Yeah. But, no, it was fun. And, guys, listen, I'm sorry to, sorry to cut this short, yep. but I want to go back to the locker room and celebrate right. with those guys, all right? Go all ahead. Right. Thanks for nice coming. Nice Great to be back. Thank you. Thanks for welcoming me home, all right? All right, okay. all right baby. Uh, we will be back on the Viner Four Gates postgame show with Mason and then John Gilchrist here in a moment. <laughs> As we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Back here at Xfinity Center, jumping in is the turp of the game, John Gilchrist. When you see somebody like Cowan take that game over at the very end, look like somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he looked like himself. He was very, he has a huge heart. You know, that's what you have to love about him because, like, it took him a while to kind of get going at halftime. I was hoping he was going to come out and do what he did. He pulled it away from him. He's a top-notch point guard. Mm -hmm. Bruce? What's Sean Kilchris doing now? Uh, I'm, I'm back home in my uh, hometown of Virginia Beach. I'm uh, coaching high school there and, you know, teaching. I'm, I'm actually a teacher right now. So. It's so hard to believe it's been so long since you graduated. Yeah. I can still remember flying down that Sunday <laughs> to watch you get us our second ACC tournament win. Yeah, I mean, you live with that, don't you? That comes up a lot to you, I bet. Yeah, I mean, mostly to the people who remember me for my efforts that was put in here. And so then that feels great, you know what I mean, to be remembered for something that you put your you know, hard work into. You know, but I mean, I have a lot of memories from here, and I'm just very thankful for the opportunity. What Tell us your impressions of this team, John. I mean, very talented, very young. You know, uh, I love Bruno. I mean, we have some leadership from, you know, Cowan, the, the freshmen, you know, they're, they're good. I mean, they have a lot of pieces, and being that it's a young team, they're going to grow as the season goes along. I, I have very high hopes for this team. Wayne? On the defensive side, it looked like Maryland was pressing up on the ball, and once Penn State got below the foul line, there wasn't a lot of help rotation. Yeah. Is that how the defense was called, or should were you looking for the bigs to help a little more as guys drove to the hoop? I mean, they, they had bigs down low, so it's kind of hard to help off because now you're leaving rebounding, you know, opportunities and dumb downs and things of that nature. But um, the main thing, I just say we need to keep them out the lane more, you know, to eliminate that entire problem. But once again, uh, we're good. We have some things we have to work on. Tonight it was defensively on the perimeter, as you say, but I'm very excited for the going forward. John, John you were an ACC guy. Yes. You see the Big Ten brand the ball. 
it's tougher, yes. it's more brutal. How would you have fit in in that kind of game? You're a tough guy. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I like to, you know, the bang and everything. But um, me personally, I, I like the ACC brand. It's a little bit more finesse. But, you know, you didn't hear that from me. You know what I mean? But, I mean, it's, it's well, definitely. you just told it to 100,000 <laughs> right. people. No, right, no, but right. no, seriously, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a physical game. You know, and, and the way that we're recruiting, we have the, the bigs that are in there, and they're really banging, and they're yeah. playing tough. So, you know, it, it's, it's good, you know. But you got to have guards like Morsell and Aiello yeah. to take that beating. Definitely, right? definitely. Because these guys are big guys. Definitely. I mean, it, it, it's definitely a tougher brand of basketball. You have to have solid bigs, and you just have to get in the weight room. When you saw Stevens come in for Penn State, or 24, you said, look at the size difference. About the same size as Bruno, but he's about 40 pounds he heavier. A big we, we don't big have that. We don't have a Curtis Schultz. We don't have that guy. I'll take Bruno and Sticks over any two big men in the league. Definitely. Yeah, but right. I, I so wish we had that third guy to come in who played tight end or, or defensive end half his life as playing basketball. We can't have everything, all right? All right. Exactly. Well, we can't have everything, but we do have intern Mason coming up. John, you brought your daughter. Yes, What's yes, her name? Yes, you want to uh, pop her on for a second? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, all you right. Pop, pop her on. Yeah, bring her on. So tell us, this is the baby. What's her name? <laughs> Emery Gilchrist. Emery Gilchrist. Emery? Okay. Uh, do you remember any of John's days in Maryland? Were you... I do. All I do. Right. Yeah. It's great to be back here. Oh, look at that. She wants the mic. Yeah. Or whatever. She, she may have a future in broadcast. Whatever. John, whenever you're here, we'd love to have you on. Thank you. Anytime. All right. Take care, buddy. the center and Maryland still won over Penn State tonight let's talk about the actual game We've got Mason Bruce I'm Wayne Mason Penn State had a run with Reeves and, and, and they were killed it, man they had two guys 23 and 11 that were just killing it in the first half sort of went away in the second half what did you see the change in the game well, I thought this game resembled the second half of the Virginia game. Every second, foul, foul, foul. And it, they were bad calls both ways. I mean, it just it wasn't a well-refereed game, and it showed. And that's why the score is 66 to 59. It's hard to establish a rhythm. It's hard to get going. It's hard to get hot. I mean, it's hard to do almost anything when there are that many fouls. So you think the choppiness of the game stopped the Penn State scoring, or was it a barrel I think, defense? I think it killed both teams. I, I think Penn State took the game out of the game with all the fouls. I mean, they would not give Maryland a basket. Everything was, like, earned. I, I think they had 18 fouls in the first half. Let me tell you one thing that was interesting, because Mason, throughout the game, you, you were saying, well, Morsell's not playing that great, or Cowan's not playing that great, but guess what? When it mattered, those guys came through, and that's why they won. That I is. I mean, Morsell and Cowan came through at the end of the game, mm -hmm. especially Cowan. Two, he, he had a step back three right there, and then... Yeah, but then he followed that up with a turnover, so it, it balances out. Cal well, in the end, they're going to ask you, did you win or not? Right. And this is a Big Ten game that we say it again. Did we had to win. Thank you. It was a must game because we're going to Purdue. Mason says we got a good chance to win. I'm not so sure. I didn't say I said you said they're slim to none, and I said it's better than that. Well, it's better than that, but they're going to be a what, five, six-point under hook? Yeah, they are not. Okay, so you were there. What makes Purdue so hard to play? Great fans. They're there an hour before the game. They're just besides themselves screaming for the team. Now, last year the team was great. This year isn't great. But uh, all I can tell you is it's a tough place to play. It's a long flight. And on top of that, it's our first road game. Right. All right, Navy was a road game, but, nah. you know, it probably half the people there were fruit for Maryland. But uh, I just think it's going to be a tough, tough win right. for Maryland. Uh, any final parting? I want to get an opinion from you two guys because uh, we didn't talk about it today. Two big games tomorrow. All right. First one, Tottenham and Arsenal. Who you like? Tottenham. Okay. Who? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But the real big game is the Ravens. And the Ravens are going to Atlanta to face Matty Ice, Julio Jones, with Lamar Jackson at quarterback, maybe Joe sees a little while. How you guys see that game going? Oh, I think Atlanta's sort of the Falcons done. by 20. 20? 20. <laughs> 20. I, the Ravens are 
frankly, terrible at covering good wide receivers. And you're talking about a team that's got Sanu, they got Julio Jones, they have Calvin Ridley. And the list just goes on and on of the weapons on Atlanta's offense. Atlanta, turn, uh, Ravens start off favorite, but Atlanta's now the favorite. I just think Atlanta, the heart's sort of out of them. That season's sort of over for them. Well, that's a bad sign. That's not a good sign for, for Atlanta. Them. That's what he said they're going to win. I say the Ravens are going to well, win. Well, yeah. I don't know. When you throw the ball like that, that's more of a thing that you say about a running team. But Atlanta, it's all about the air game. It's yes, all it about is. the... It's a gun. It's a run and gun team, and, and Lamar Jackson, unless they can completely control the clock, and now that Dallas is running away with it, yeah. who's who the Redskins play? Okay, they're not running away with it. Let's go. The, if the Redskins beat the Eagles on Monday, it's a tie again. So, right. And Bruce, I'll give you one note on the Ravens. If yes. they get the ball first and they put seven points on the board, yeah. that immediately changes the whole game. I uh, agree. I agree with How that. How many Ravens fans make it to Atlanta? A lot. Because not that many Atlanta fans. <laughs> I know. But no, and a it's, lot. A cheap, it's a cheap. It's a cheap flight. It's a cheap flight. They know it's an easy drive. So in other words, it'll be a lot there tomorrow. But uh, I love Lamar. I love what's going on with the team, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. And for those test. watching this on Saturday night, Bruce is on in the nest, uh, sponsored by Science and Kirk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio tomorrow at nine, and then you have a podcast tomorrow night, Young yeah. Terps. Covering Maryland um, goes to the Final Four in soccer. And yeah, Final Four team. I'm making predictions. Ready? All right. I think with the, we could have a new coach by tomorrow. I hope so. Football, football coach. coach. I don't think so. I think I think Monday, Monday night we'll know. But hey, maybe we'll have to throw out another megapod after a yeah. uh, new coach. Once once the coach is announced, we are megapoding again. Well, we have a great relationship with the guy we think is going to be the coach. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right, that'll do it from Xfinity Center. Who's taking us home? You got it? Uh, I mean, it's your show. All right, it's my show. Maryland takes over Penn State. Tough road game on Tuesday. We will see you from Baltimore next Saturday, which is our next basketball show. Good evening.